Hello, and welcome to the Fundamentals of Weather Spotting and Observing in the Inland Northwest. This is based on virtual online spotter training that was held on July 12, 2016 by the staff at the National Weather Service in Spokane, Washington. So on the agenda for today, we're going to cover four different sections. Each one will have its own presentation to view. This first one will be called the background of the National Weather Service and the Weather Spotter Program. The second is covering the spotter checklist and reporting techniques. Number three will be either the Severe Weather 101 or Winter Weather 102, depending on the season. And number four discusses ways to get involved. You will need to view each one of these to complete your spotter training. So first we're going to talk about the National Weather Service. The Spokane office is located west of Spokane on the West Plains. And in the office we have about 26 employees. Most of them are meteorologists or forecasters. We do have one hydrologist and several technicians that keep things running smoothly in the office. Our office is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and that's because weather never stops. This includes weekends and holidays. And our main duties include taking observations, surface observations, and weather balloon launches, writing the forecasts that go out 7 days, and issuing all watches and warnings for severe and hazardous weather across our area. So where is the National Weather Service? Well, there are offices all across the country. In fact, there are 122 weather forecast offices. Spokane is one of four that cover the state of Washington and four that cover the state of Idaho. We cover several counties of eastern Washington and north Idaho. So there are many observations and tools that we use to do our job, including weather balloons, watching the radar, and satellite. Weather balloon launches are done at the Spokane Weather Office twice a day every day and during Pacific Daylight Time it's launched at 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. Across the country there are 92 upper air sites that do the exact same thing. We fill up balloons full of hydrogen gas. We attach boxes that have weather instruments that detect temperature, humidity, air pressure, wind speed, and wind direction. We tie the box to the balloon and let it go through the atmosphere. So these balloon launches rise up through the atmosphere and take weather in measurements. It rises about 19 miles high or roughly 100,000 feet. The, ex the length of the trip is about an hour and 45 minutes. As the balloon rises through the atmosphere, air pressure lowers and the balloon expands until at one point the balloon gets so large that it pops. A parachute will open and the box will fall back down to the earth. We receive about 10 to 20 percent that are returned back to the earth and they're mailed back to us. Here's a picture of the uh, trace of the weather information that we receive from the weather balloon uh, radio sons. It gives us traces of temperature and moisture from the surface all the way up through the tops of the atmosphere. And with this information at all the other 92 upper air sites, we can get a three-dimensional view of what is going on in the atmosphere. And this is very important because this is the main ingredient that goes into making the weather forecast, finding out what is going on in the atmosphere, the current conditions. 
Another important tool that we have at our office is the Doppler weather radar. It's located right outside of the doors of the weather office. It's a large dish that scans the skies looking for precipitation. And across the country there are 159 radars such as ours. How does the weather radar work? Well, the radar pulses and listens as it rotates in a circle casting out waves of electromagnetic radiation. It takes multiple slices at different elevations and scans the skies. After several minutes it completes the volume scan, which can take up to four to eight minutes. And then it detects and shows on our screens where there's precipitation in storms. The weather radar is a very important tool and can give us a lot of information of what's going on in the atmosphere, but there are some limitations. Its best effective range is about 90 miles. It can see up to 140 miles, but does miss some of the lower portions of storms. The lowest slice is angled up at about a half a degree, so at distant locations it may miss some of the lower portions of the storm. And sometimes ground clutter gets in the way from trees and mountains and false returns. And our weather radars are positioned across different portions of the state. We have ours in Spokane. There's also one in Seattle. And there is one down in Pendleton, Oregon. All of them tend to overlap a little bit and give us a good coverage of the state of Washington and into North Idaho. Unfortunately, there are some spots that don't really get much good radar coverage, and that includes the Cascades. So that is why we need trained weather spotters, because it's important to get the ground truth of what is happening at ground level. So due to those radar limitations, the radars can't see what's going on across every corner of our region. The reports uh, that we get help verify what's going on that we see in the radar and the satellite, and it helps fill the holes of what we cannot see. Ground truth is very important, and the goal is to maximize our warning effectiveness and our lead times. So weather spotters are very important. We have over 1,200 weather spotters across eastern Washington and north Idaho, but they tend to be concentrated in the metropolitan areas. So getting those rural spotters are very important, and uh, those that can give us ground truth of what is happening. This concludes part one of our virtual weather spotter training. Please check back with part two for further information. Thank you.